Traveling, working, and living full-time in my Class B van along with my dog, Willie Nelson. I'm Milo, and this is Milo Talks. A man walks into a dog park. Sounds like the beginning of a good or a bad joke. But in this case, it was somewhat extraordinary. A man did walk into a dog park, a dog park that I was at with my dog, Willie Nelson. He, however, started to take his medium-sized dog into the small dog area away from us, but I told him my dog was friendly as I was hoping his dog would help to run my dog out of energy. We had been driving for the last two hours, and this was the treat I gave to Willie, a visit to a dog park. We had one more hour to go, so I needed him to be a little bit fatigued. I did not even know what town we were in. I had only known that we had crossed into Oklahoma when I hit find closest dog park option on my map routing system on my phone. So the man brings his dog into the big dog park, and thankfully, they, the two dogs got along just fine. I had asked him the name of the town. He said the name, and I can't recall what it was at the time. And I guess it really doesn't matter. I was just somewhere in the middle of Oklahoma. I did ask if marijuana had become legal, not because I participate, mom and dad, Not that they listened, but I had passed a billboard that seemed to be promoting it, so I was just curious. And from that question and me saying that my dog's name was Willie Nelson, I guess he just assumed I would not be offended or put off by what he said next. From his early 20s to his mid-30s, my new fellow dog park friend was a heroin addict. I was shocked. Not because I know anything about heroin or people that use it, but this guy seemed more like a farmer. He was 6'3", had a big red pickup truck, an old dog, and he just didn't come across as some dude who was using heroin or had been using heroin. So now I was very much intrigued, and thankfully he did not hold back. He had started using heroin after being offered cocaine on a job site in California. He used and hid this from his wife for the next five years. This was in his early 20s. He eventually moved to heroin and in his mid-30s stopped heroin and moved to to just being a full-blown alcoholic. Those are his words. From the sounds of it, he was an all-day drinker. So about seven years ago, and I'm guessing this guy is somewhere in his 50s, he said he had a dream from God where he and God had a bit of an argument of sorts. God told him he had to stop drinking because he had something more to offer the world. But he told God no. So God said he would eventually see it his way, and the dream ended. A few days later, he is getting pulled over while driving down the road drinking a 12-pack. He goes to jail. About two weeks later after that, he gets pulled over again, again, drinking and driving and arrested for DUI. This time, when his girlfriend, who is now his wife, picks him up and asks, and asks him if he needs a beer, he says no. He would have usually said yes because after not drinking for so long, he would actually get the shakes. But this time, he said not only no to the beer, but he said no to a cigarette. Seven years later, still no drinking, no cigarettes, and he got his life back on the straight and narrow, just in time to be able to enjoy his children. Where his daughter saw their dad drunk, now his grandchildren only see a sober, happy grandfather. He also informed me that he recently bought a boat and an RV and was thrilled to have even gotten his credit up so he could have credit cards. I asked him if he was a churchgoer, and he said no, never was. He said, and this is my favorite part, he said his relationship with God is like one you would have with a woman. You don't tell everyone about it. It's personal. It's just between the two of you. I asked him how he ended up in this little place where we were at this dog park. He said he was here helping take care of his wife's 92-year-old mother. He had a few other stories he threw in, like his house burning down and how he moved into a tiny house for two years. But I needed to start on my journey, and he asked where I was headed. I said I was headed to an RV park, but they don't take reservations, so I was hoping they would still have a spot. He said there was a park not far from where we were, and it was on a lake, and it was only 20 bucks a night. I asked him how he'd make reservations, and he said, you just pull up and pick a spot, and a ranger would come by and collect the money that night. I asked for the name of the place, and he says, you know what? I'll just show you. 
So he got into his red pickup truck and I began to follow him to an unknown location. Of course I did. So now I'm about five minutes into this drive following this man through a backcountry road and I start to think this might be a bad idea. But then I considered our conversation and I told that part of my brain to be quiet. As we kept going, the voice kept getting louder, but I kept following him. Thankfully, it was maybe 10 minutes and he pulls into a drive and by my map app, I can see it's a lake. Sure enough, 20 sites with full hookups. He pulls off to the side of the road, steps out of that red pickup truck and gave me a big smile and says, see, you can pick any place you want and here is your view. It was a really nice little lake. His joy was contagious. He wished me well and I thanked him. He said, maybe we would see each other again someday camping. And I said, I hope so. And he left. I drove and parked in a spot, sat a minute, let Willie out for a quick walk, and then decided not to stay. Perhaps it was the cat on the leash at the RV next door and the tick that I had just pulled off my neck. Those things may have helped me make my decision that I would just continue on. Plus, putting the extra hour on my journey today would help me tomorrow with a much longer trip I had planned. So I marked the place on my map so that I could come back at another time. An hour later, I rolled into my new campsite where I am tonight. It just so happens to have a lake and I'm sure it also has some ticks. But what an amazing conversation and what a nice man to offer to help me out. I'm also thankful for the dog park. They're good for Willie, but they're also good for me. I never got his name and he did not ask me mine. Not that it matters. It's a smile and a story that I will not soon forget. I'm glad I talked to strangers, but maybe I shouldn't follow them into the woods. But on a scale of one to 10, this this was a mild, reckless thing to do. Was it reckless or just being hopeful that we stand a chance of mankind actually being kind? Remember hitchhikers when young people would get a backpack and just hitchhike across the country? Walking down the highway with their thumbs out, some rando pulls over and says, hey, where you headed? And they're like, over here. And he says, yeah, I'm headed that way. I can get you close. Jump in, kid. The kid goes, yeah. And off they go. Then the movie The Hitchhiker came out, and I am pretty sure that changed everything. Many things have changed. But my point is this. I picked up a guy walking with a gas can. He did not have his thumb out. But I knew the small gas station he was headed to was almost a mile away. It was also getting dark, and it was also in the backwoods of Mississippi, and he was also black. And yes, that matters to this story. It matters because you should have saw his face when he got in and saw me. Some random lady picking him up in the backwoods of Mississippi. And he said as much. He thought it was crazy that I picked him up, but I thought he needed the ride. I think he was more concerned for me. (laughs) But I suspect he would not have been offered a ride, and it was the right thing to do. I was very close to my house, so I called my boyfriend on speaker and told him what was going on and that I was taking this guy to the gas station and then taking him back to his car. Everything worked out great. The guy got his gas, I took him back, and maybe, just maybe, I altered his perception of the world just a little. Now, I'm sure you can give me several other examples of how that could have gone poorly, but... I will not live my life fearing everyone I meet, and I will also not stay or do something when my gut tells me not to. It's a balancing walk to be cautious, but not to be too cautious that you end up missing out on really great things. I am a reckless hopeful, but don't tell my parents. I have been asked a few times just to do some of these solo commentaries, uh, especially as I travel. And it is a little bit different to actually not hold a microphone to someone's face and ask them to repeat everything they've just told me. So this was kind of a fun experiment. So if you've liked this, please let me know. Either send me a private message or just like and leave a comment wherever you're listening to this. But as always, thank you for your support, especially to my top 15. You know who you are. You never miss a show, and I know you're out there supporting me. Thank you so much. Always be safe and just go see everything. Thank you for listening to Milo Talks. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Milo Talks or email me at milotalkstostrangers at gmail.com.